still have the application form in my handbag. I mean, you'd hardly want the child to settle. This town lashes itself to you. It draws up misery like spoiled fog water. We walk the main road home together, factory uniforms, trapping sweat and chafing legs. I said to her, you could meet a pilot, love. Ah, ma'am. Natalie, I said, I'm serious. You could be transatlantic, first class, none of this assembly line business. She said, you done all right with it, but you and da. Me and da, I scoffed. I tutted. Jim was long-term sick from the quality assessment rotor. He had hernias like battleships ramming the weak fibres of his gut. He had wishbone legs from 40 years on the high inspection stools. I told Natalie how on our honeymoon he carried me down the steps of the plane under the white Spanish sun. How with the in-flight meals we'd gotten napkins and bottled water. We'd lick the unfamiliar prongs of the foreign airline forks. The cabin crew had told me, hasta pronto. But you can't gallivant with responsibilities. I had the baby, and Jim's super friend space for me on the women's line. And here was Nat, 16. I said, you've done a week, have you not enough of it? I know, she said, it's all right, the girls are all right. Listen to me, I said. I was digging in the handbag for the paperwork, the application forms, when we passed Sheehan's. I nudged her, there, I said. There's your man. That's what you believe in behind. And there was young Brian the Meat, under Sheehan's striped butcher's canopy, masticating a plum, the spare hand fatly squeezing a sharpener. The bones as thick as the sharpener, as thick as the bones in his forearm. I saw, and Natalie saw, the peeling, sunburned skin of a t-shirt, and when he pulled the material to mop away the pulpy juice, we both saw the whiteness of the skin below, the shocked pallor of the fish uncovered. He saw us and blinked. Well, if it is the lovely feeling, ladies. He raised a hand. The sharpener caught the traffic lighting glinted redly at us like a mad, devilish eye. With the other hand, he tossed Natalie a plum, one arm up, she caught it. He called. You'll be at the fun fair Sunday, will you girls? None of your guff, I shouted back, hasn't she more to do with her life than that? But Natalie was shouting, you can bring us more of these and all. He saluted as the green man rushed us onwards. I hissed, Nat? And she said, over the shoulder, can you not stop it, Matt? Up in your clouds and the fine day that's in it. <laughs> I watched her move away from me, fair hair coming out of the net like a puff of low cloud in the unseasonal sky. And then I was after her, desperate, scurrying to catch up, hurrying deep into the sheltered calm arena of the child's whole long life.